right now let's go ahead and configure the anti phishing policy and let's see what are the different configuration items we have over here to protect our users from being phished so when you first open this page you uh, will not see any policy over here so let's go ahead and create one so I'll just uh, hit the create button let's give it a name so let's call it a <coughs> yep contoso anti phishing policy the next uh, item in the wizard is to basically uh, basically you know target the policy whom you're going to target this policy so I'm going to target this policy to my entire user set in this domain you may choose a different configuration here depending upon if you want to create multiple anti phishing policies for different uh, kind of users or different group of users you can also do that but I'm going to go ahead and add my all my users in my domain and that's it all right it's done and now click next and this is my review page and I'm all good I'll go ahead and create this policy now once this policy is created the next thing you will do is to basically edit the policy and add uh, configurations here now the policy is created now let's go ahead and you know assign uh, or configure more granular controls in the policy so I'll go ahead and start with uh, the impersonation so ATP protects you from being impersonated and it basically helps you with two kind of impersonation one is your user impersonation where you, you have probably have seen in emails coming from the top leadership in your organization like you know chairman uh, managing director CEO sometimes sending email uh, to your employee base and asking them to do some high value transaction high value activities like clicking on URLs attachments and all and so on and the email looks like it has come from your top leadership uh, your top director and those personas because the email display names looks exactly the how they would send an email from however the emails actually has originated from a different domain it's just that users if they're not being careful and they have not double clicked on the recipe or the sender's name they probably will never get to know that while the display name is of my CEO however the email actually has originated from a third party mail engine not really for my own domain now you can protect that you can uh, uh, prohibit uh, emails coming in the name of your top leadership team by configuring anti impersonation policy this also applies to anti uh, domain impersonation so people trying to register a similar looking domain as yourself and then trying sending out email to your user base and if the users does not really paying attention if not they are not paying attention they probably will not be able to figure that out that their domain name has minute changes to it you know it probably like contoso and instead of o there's a zero in there uh, and a lot of times it happens with microsoft domain with microsoft underscore dot com or microsoft tilde dot com and so on now you can go ahead and configure these policies over here in the anti impersonation so I'll go ahead and you know, click on edit and then let's see what we have to configure here so first thing fun uh, first that we would like to enable uh, the anti impersonation anti user impersonation policy so I'm going to first turn it on and then I'm going to I need to add my users whom I'm trying to protect whose name I'm trying to protect so these are not the recipient these are the top names in your organization whose mailbox and whose names have, have high authority so I'm gonna go ahead and add one of my user here called Emily and she's our finance head and she sends a lot of emails to her team and we don't want her name to be impersonated by a random attackers from outside so I'm gonna I'm gonna add Emily here so it will basically end uh, it will basically allow us to enter the email address and the display name by querying it or you know itself and then I'm just gonna save it now uh, what it will do here is that it will apply additional machine learning if an any email coming with the similar names it doesn't really have to be an exact match of Emily Brown even if it's you know interbly changed the surname uh, or the last name uh, in, in, in as a first name and the, the first name as a last name or with certain misspelled character it can also detect as an impersonation attempt and can block it 
So I'm going to add one for now, but you can basically add up to 60 users here in the UI. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and also enable uh, the domain protection so I can automatically enable uh, impersonation, protect impersonation attempt for my own domain that I own and of course the custom domains as well. So if you have any custom domains and you would like to protect from impersonation or similar looking emails or typo squatted e uh, domains uh, who are trying to impersonate your own domain, you can enable that here itself. Now what action you would like to take when something like this really happens? So if an email is sent by an impersonated user, you may want that email to get quarantined. Of course, there are other options for you to uh, for you to uh, configure here is that you can redirect the message to a different email altogether so that you can investigate that and then see who the email is coming from and all of that. Uh, or you can move the email directly to the recipient's junk mailbox folder. You can quarantine the message. You can deliver the message and add addresses to the BCC line or you can delete the message before it's even delivered. So you have multiple options here. What I'm going to configure here that I would like the email to get moved to the recipient junk mailbox folder. Now that may not be appropriate in your environment because you don't even want users to see those emails even in the junk mailbox folder because users might consider them as wrongly put there and then might still move that email back to their inbox and they may still take an action on what this attacker is trying them to do. Um, so you can either quarantine the message or you can re redirect the message to a different mailbox so that you can investigate that further and then release it. But just for, for, uh, just for the demo purpose, I'm going to go ahead and quarantine this message for now. And if the email is again, uh, gets, if the email is uh, coming from an impersonal domain, I'm going to go ahead and quarantine that message as well. Now the next option is to basically enable mailbox intelligence. So what mailbox intelligence really does, it basically creates a graph of a user and it maps with different, you know, in different indicators like if a particular user whom they really interact with and how often they interact with, uh, which are the mailbox, which are the domains that they interact with. So it basically creates a common map of, you know, all these indicators and when an email comes from a from a different mailbox altogether or a different domain altogether which has not been uh, interacting with this user earlier, it can increase the risk uh, of that email being uh, you know, malicious or suspicious and if the display name matches with an existing employee in the organization or existing uh, you know, display names of an existing user that the user is trying to, it has already been interacting with then it can increases the risk level of that email that is coming now from a different domain altogether. So it, you should turn on mailbox intelligence for that matter. Now here you can add some trusted senders because if you have added uh, like here in this example I've added Emily Brown in a protected user list. Now if Emily Brown also sends out an email from her personal email addresses to you know her colleagues or her subordinates that will be countered that will be counted as a impersonation so if you don't want those kind of emails to get blocked you can go ahead and add that user's personal email id here in this uh, trusted domains and senders so that those domains and those senders are not getting blocked who may have similar names or exactly the same name as your top leadership team and then we can go ahead and review our settings there are few things that i would like to turn uh, I forgot to mention in the actions tab you have an option here to basically enable safety tips so I'll go back in my action tab and enable uh, safety tips here so I'm going to go ahead and turn on impersonation safety tips so even if the mails are getting delivered uh, those emails will basically have a safety tip at the top which will show user or which will basically warn users that these emails might have come from a different source than whom they're interacting with earlier and should be really cautious before they take any action on them. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save here. The next thing is, this, you know, spoof setting. And while the spoof setting is not really an e ATP conf configuration, it's basically an EOP configuration. So you should already have it, even if you're not an ATP customer and you should turn it on. Uh, so this will try and detect if the emails are, have, are originating from the right servers 
uh, having the right uh, you know, authentication parameters like SPF, DBAC and so on and uh, they're not being spoofed. Uh, you can also select what actions that you would like that emails uh, to go through. If they are found to be spoofing, then you can select option like move them to recipient junk mailbox folder or quarantine it. I'm going to let it go to the recipient's junk mailbox folder for now. So review your settings and then simply save. So we have not made any changes, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel it for here. Now in the advanced settings, you have some additional parameters here and this is where you can basically increase the effectiveness or the aggressiveness of the anti-phishing uh, machine learning. So if you are one of those customer or one of those domains who are who tends to get a lot of emails, a lot of phishing uh, emails coming to you and the standard policy or standard machine learning may not be that effective for you, you can go ahead and increase the aggressiveness to even more at a higher level. And as and when you increase it uh, to a down, it, it you know it basically becomes more and more aggressive. So, and you can even configure this for separately for separate set of users, like for for a particular department or a particular group of people whose whose tolerance level for phishing is really really low. You may want to be you may want to have more aggressive uh, machine learning in there. And of course, there's a trade-off when you have you know more aggressive machine learning to identify you know phishing. You might also have to deal with you know a quite a you know bit of false positives as well. So there's a proper trade-off there as well. All right, so I'm going to keep it for standard. So you should start with standard and let's see you know and see how the, it's affecting your mail flow, and then you can come back here and you can always optimize this configuration later on. So I'm going to go ahead and save this configuration, and I'm going to go ahead and close the the parent configuration chart as well. All right, so we just configured the ATP safe attachments, ATP safe links, and ATP anti-phishing policies. Now, these are the good configurations to begin with. However, trust me, ATP is not just a couple of check boxes. I mean, you can live with it forever. Uh, you will have to come and tune it up as per your uh, you know, mail flow. You might see a few false positives coming in here because ATP is providing additional layer protection. If that is happening, you may want to come back here and optimize configuration based on your needs so that you have a uh, you know, more streamlined mail flow. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, going to go ahead and uh, let these policies run for a while.